our third objective is to find the appropriate width for our PMOS to have equal rise and fall time. The result of our previous analysis showed us that the value of TPDR is much greater than the value of TPDF. Means that the time that is required to charge the output capacitor is much larger than the time to discharge. Actually, this result shouldn't surprise you since we have already found in our first objective that the resistance of our PMOS is much greater than the resistance of our NMOS. So in this video, we'll try to identify an appropriate size for the PMOS such that we can achieve TPDR that is equal to TPDF. From our first order RC delay time model, we found that the propagation delay is proportional to the channel resistance. Right. So the way to reduce the TPDR is to reduce the resistance of the PMOS. One can achieve this by increasing the width of our PMOS as we know that the rest channel resistance of a MOSFET is inversely proportional to the width. Also, while varying the PMOS width, one has to be aware that it is not just the TPDR that will be affected, but the other timing parameter which is TPDF will also affect it when we try to vary the width of the PMOS. The reason for this could be read from your Rabe textbook. So in order to find the appropriate sizes for the PMOS, one need to define a variable for the PMOS transistor's width. And later, we'll be using these variables to vary the width of the PMOS over a range by making use of a parametric analysis. So we will discuss about the parametric analysis later along the flow of this procedure. Open the schematic of dynamic inverter again and click on one of the instances of the inverter, right click, select, design, edit and make sure that you select the open in new tab option. So once you click on this, you will get your inverter schematic opened again. So now in this, we are going to modify the width of PMOS from a value to a variable. So select the transistor PMOS and right click and then go to the properties and define the total width as WP rather than to you. Okay. And just click OK. So click on check and save and then get back to your dynamic inverter schematic again and then click on check and save. So it's from this dynamic inverter. You can just click on launch ADL. And now we are going to use the third sub window that we have not yet used till now. So click on this variables and select copy from cell U. So this should copy the variable that we have defined in our inverter to appear on the design variable sub window. So now I'm just going to define the default value of our PMOS, which is to you. As usual, we define the analysis sub window with the transient analysis. And just to give some time, as something like 60 nanosecond. Just click on moderate and click OK. While defining the output sub window, there are a few modifications that we are going to do. The first one is to run this transient analysis without defining the output sub window. So this is needed to ensure that the database is defined before performing the parametric analysis. So just simply click on it and that's it. So we'll not get any uh, plots during this process. Our next task is to define three output expressions, namely TPDR, TPDF and average propagation delay where this T average represents the mean value of TPDR and TPDF. So now first we define TPDR by clicking on outputs setup. So this is a bit different from the previous option where we used to select to be plotted but this time we are selecting the setup. So under this name option type TPDR. And to fill this expression option, click on this open, which 
should open the calculator window. Now select the delay function from the function panel. Now one thing you might note that we haven't plotted any graph. So in order to fill this signal one with input signal, we don't have any graph with us. But we can make use of this option VT in order to select the transient voltage of the node that we are interested. And make sure you select this VT radio button and select the input wire of the first inverter. So this will automatically copies this VT node expression onto our buffer and use this option buffer to copy from buffer onto signal 1. By similar you can select the output of the first inverter wire and again do the same process for signal 2 definition. From here on the remaining options are identical to what we have done for TPDR. So just click on apply and now rather than clicking on this evaluate button what we have to do right now is to switch back to our output expression window and then click on this get expression option. So this copies what is there as an expression in our buffer onto this expression option here. Just click on add which will add the TPDR with this expression. The next is to define TPDF. So in the similar way you can define the TPDF. So before we define the average propagation delay we just look into the formula here. So the average propagation delay is nothing but it is TPDR plus TPDF divided by. Now based on the formula that is shown in the slide we will define a variable name the average to define the average delay. Now since our calculator is already open I'm just switching back to our calculator and you could be able to see that there are two expressions one in the buffer the other one in the stack. So the one that is there in the buffer is actually our TPDF and the other one which you have as a first element in the stack is that represents our TPDR. So it's been stored sequentially since I have defined one after the other. So now uh, when we perform an add we need two operands. So one of the operands supposed to be in the buffer and the other operand supposed to be as a first element of our stack. So now that since we have those two conditions here I just click on this add button. So once I click on this add button you get able to see that the tool has automatically taken the first element of our stack and add that with the previous element that was available in our buffer. So now that I have both A and B that has been added or both TPDR and TPDF been added. So now this entire expression has to be divided by the number 2. But now I need a number 2 that has to be defined in the buffer rather than in the stack. So what we can do is, is to push whatever is there in the buffer onto our stack. So there is an option for us to do that. We just simply click on this option. So that will actually put the expression that was there in the buffer onto our stack. So now simply delete the previous option that we have here with the number 2. So now when I click on this divide it takes the first element of our stack divided by the element that is or the value that is available on our buffer. So now we have got the expression. So this expression has to be copied under our t average. With that we have defined all the three timing parameters we want to evaluate through parametric analysis. Now click OK and then get back to your ADE window. Now since we have defined our output variables through expressions or through the setup, you will not get any graph when you try to simply click on this play button. So whenever you define an output through this setup option, it's always required to run a parametric analysis to get a graph out of it. So I'm just going to do the same. So click on this tools and click on parametric analysis. So under this, the variable that I want to sweep is basically the width of our PMOS which you can select by double clicking it and select the option WP. Now this variable I'm going to sweep from 2 micron to 10 micron 
and define the total steps to around 12. Just click on this play button which is there in the parametric analysis. So this should bring us the graph plotting all the three expressions with respect to WP. Now note here the red graph is the plot of TPDR and as expected the value of TPDR or the time delay for rising keeps on reducing as we increase the width of our PMOS. But you could able to see that TPDF which is the falling time or the discharging time keep rising as we increase the WP and this happens just because the input capacitance of the second inverter that has been attached to the output of the first one keeps rising as we increase the width of our PMOS and there is also one more thing that we have to note in this graph is the green graph which which is nothing but the average propagation delay graph you could find that it finds the minimum value at a different value of WP the value of WP at which the TPDR is equal to TPDF is totally different so now our task is to find at what value of WP we have this TPDR equal to TPDF and the second is to find what is the width of our PMOS at which the average propagation delay becomes minimum. So first let me try to evaluate the first one. So in order to do this we have to perform the subtraction of TPDR with TPDF. This could be done by making use of this tool calculator and now this time we have the wave we are going to select the wave and select the TPDR and later select our TPDF and since we are going to perform a subtraction click on this subtract and that should bring the TPDR minus TPDF so now when we try to click on this evaluate it will plot a graph which is the blue one when the two values are becoming equal then we know then during the subtraction it would end up having a value 0 so now we can make use of our cross function get back to the calculator and select the new plot that we have done the blue one here you could be able to find the cross function and now set the threshold value to at 0 and click on apply now click on evaluate during this evaluation it returns us the value of WP at which the TPDR is equal to TPDF and just make a note of this one so as said before the next task is to identify at what WP this minimum happens so in order to evaluate that select the green plot and then select the xmin function and click on this apply and then click on this evaluate so that should bring us the value of WP at which the T average is minimum. So just make a note of this value as well. So one can summarize the following table including the width to have the inverter switching voltage to be at 0.9. So this last result is basically from our first experiment. Now out of these different values of WP which WP one has to choose to design a standard cell library? The answer is, is that one has to have all the three inverters having all WP values that are tabulated. But this is for the most generic standard cell design library. But for our lab purpose, we will choose the value of WP to be 4U, which is twice the width of our NMOS width. Now for this choice of WP you need to tabulate the amount of compromise that is done in terms of TPDR, TPDF and the switching voltage or the inverter switching voltage VM and write the inference based on it.